here. We'll walk you through part of it. So next, I agree. I did all users and then I hit next. You just say, yeah, I'm gonna cancel out at before, but on your, you'll hit finish and let it go through, but I'll show you what happens next here as it goes through. Oh, and I obviously, right. Okay, so then you're gonna tell it where to install. Uh, I just did mine in my C drive. Um, you know, so we'll just do it in my H drive for now. Okay, so right here, do not click this one. Do click this one. So we'll leave that clicked. Uh, see, you can see it was already there. So I'm gonna hit cancel. So just make sure you're just doing this one and then hit install and you're good. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of this. That was it for that dependencies. So for number step, get dash scm.com forward slash download and then win because it's a Windows. If you don't, then go back and install it on another uh, device that you're using. Uh, I did 64 bit, so go ahead and click that, go through that. There's nothing special there. Go ahead and hit next, 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 and finish, and you'll be good. I don't need to walk through that. So go to OBS, go ahead and download OBS, which is right here, and um, download that, install it, you'll be good. Second thing you're gonna, you want to go to OBS a virtual cam. Now, the one that is suggested in the GitHub, this is very, 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 very important. The one that's suggested in the GitHub repository takes you to uh, uh, one that's no longer in use. It doesn't work very well. Uh, and it will not work for uh, this particular, um, This it just won't work, okay? So don't, don't try, just go to this one. OBS Virtual Cam 2.0.5. It was produced May 5th of 2020. Here is the forum for it, okay? OBS-virtualcam.949. Download this. Hit the go to download. It'll take you there, um, and then you can download it. And you can see it. Are, it's very, very small. Go ahead and run it, and once it's run, you're going to see what we can do. Mini Conda. I always run my stuff in elevated mode, so run it as an administrator. And when you do that, it pops up like this. Inside of here, uh, what I did um, is you're going to copy and paste this command, which is git. So git clone h https colon backslash backslash and then this URL, right? And paste it in there and then hit enter. I already did that. So when you do that, it's going to take a long time. Uh, or it can take, it depends on your internet. That actually didn't take me that long. And then you're going to change directory into that directory, avatarify-python. When you do, it'll look like this. It'll say C colon, and then your username profile. So your profile, it could be, so we'll just represent it by X. In my case, mine's my first name and last name, or last initial. And then avatarify-python, okay? So once you have that folder, you're going to do the next step here, which is um, once that's done, you're going to move that pack. You're not going to unpack this. So leave this compressed. And all you're going to do is copy it. And you're going to stick it. Uh, I see. I just realized you can't see what I'm doing. You're going to copy it. And then you're going to stick it in that right here. And this stick it here you just paste it uh, right there paste button and paste it into this path directory do not right click and do uh, what do you call it uh, show more options do not do this one do not unpack it leave it packed okay then you're gonna do this this is what takes the longest this took me at least 15 minutes so copy script dash like this script plural backslash install underscore windows dot bat this takes forever so i'll show you the log look at this we so yeah it takes a long time <laughs> so you don't have to endure that pain i already did it once you do it don't do anything else go get a cup of coffee come back and you'll be fine next section here you're gonna run so we'll do this together because now that it's in there, 
we're going to run this command, okay, which is run underscore windows. And this is inside of Anaconda, by the way. Wow, I'm having like a brain fart. Okay, but bat. If the installation was successful, you're going to see two things pop up. Cam and Avatarify will appear. So this does take a little while, um, and so for my system config here, I have a Ryzen 7 uh, second, which means it's going through the process and it's trying to load it right now. Um, and there it is. Hello, everybody. Um, and zoom and then hit X when you're ready. So hit X, avatar will come up, and hello, I am Albert Einstein. Now, officially as of today. Thank you for viewing my YouTube video. No, 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 we're not done yet. In fact, my teeth even show when I smile. So it does work. Eye movements works just fine. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe I can get back into Arnold. Get a little pump going today. Um, so yeah, based on, sorry about that. That's a, last year, this year, same thing. We got to do the same thing, right? So, um, Oh, sometimes helping to enunciate to get that mouth moving a little bit better does actually help the avatar, as you can tell there. Uh, and then there's just sometimes like Albert Einstein where it just looks natural for whatever reason. Things. Oh, I didn't mention this. Actually, I'm glad we, we, we didn't move on. So you're going to want to hit the plus icon. So actually how this... <laughs> we'll go back. Go back to step five. Hit the plus icon. You'll hit Windows Capture, okay? When you do that, create a new one. As you can see, I already made one called Window Capture Avatarify. Make sure it's Make Source Visible. And that was it. Um, yeah, that was it. You just need to make sure you do that, okay? And then even with this one, and then when, you, when you're going through it, I had to, so we'll just go to Properties so you can see what we did. When you click OK, it brings up this. All you're doing is saying, I'm going to select what window? Well, obviously, I want to select the Avatarify window because that's what I'm trying to capture. So uh, you just hit OK, and that's what, and then it instantly dropped me into here. So it does work. It's pretty intuitive. I don't know. Again, I know you're probably going to run into errors. The, and, and there it is, right? It already is on the OBS. It's showing that it works just fine. So that's pretty cool. And somebody's outside. Anyways, so what you'll want to do now is go to Virtual Cam. So Tools, Virtual Cam. Make sure Auto Start is turned on. Make sure your buffered frames is set to zero. Okay? And that's it. Once that is good, all you have to do is click Start Virtual Camera. And now everything that's on this screen is now live. So we know this by going to Zoom. I have a Zoom meeting later on. It's not in here. I have to join it. But let's just jo let's just make a new one. No, I don't want to take over my audio source. But we do want to start this, and we want to select OBS Virtual Camera. When I hit Start Video, Shazam! You see now we are on the Zoom, and we are on uh, this right here. So then I can select it and it still comes live over here on the Zoom meeting. And you can have fun. You can you can go to the directory and go to avatar. So I'm going to my C, I'm going to my users, I'm going to MM, my, or in this case your profile, you're gonna go to Avatarify, Python, you're gonna go to avatars, and in here you can upload any picture you want. So yeah. Anyways. Uh, probably didn't do a good job. There we go. Blah, 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 blah. Um, or the Mona Lisa. Or, <laughs> or Steve Jobs. Or uh, a really fast Eminem rapper right here. Nope, that doesn't work very well. But anyways, you guys get the idea. So you can drag and drop pictures or headshots or profiles that you want to manipulate into this folder and then you can just cycle through it so as long as you select this uh, window right there the avatarify you just hit a or d a is to go previous d is to go forward uh, so if i hit d i'll go to eminem steve jobs you know and, and so on and so forth and i can cycle through it that way um what else
I think that's it, everybody. So now that you know how that works, that also works on te on Teams. So I'll end meeting for now. I'll go to Teams, not Team Viewer, because it's just uh, it's just another source, and so it makes it really really simple for your computers to understand that there's a camera, and we're just making a virtual camera uh, work. So I'll hit meeting now. Yeah, start the meeting. By the way, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm trying to help out multiple companies here with our Office 365. So if you're interested or you need some help or additional help with your Office 365, we are business. We mostly do, actually strictly do B2B. Uh, so this could be kind of fun if you need some help. We've been around the game for a long, long, long time. Okay, so here we can click on this virtual camera go ahead and activate it and you can see the preview here and it works right so if I hit join now it's gonna put me into the meeting and I'm now live and can now you know mess with people or make the meeting a little interesting or you know whatever I need to do you know if I if I want to write on here if I want to take off this image you know it's it's live on the meeting or if you have some predefined um, my next suggestion to you all is to run this in a Docker. Okay. If you don't know what Docker's is, is look up Google Docker. Okay. Docker is the best. Like I said, I use it for everything. Download it. Um, and the reason why this would work out of the box with Docker is just because, um, Docker runs a isolated instance of whatever so in theory technically you could run windows inside of the docker and then install aptify on a fresh version of windows or ubuntu or if you're a linux person um or I, uh, uh, the avatar file even runs the docker you'd be ready and you could just pull it and then and just run it um, obviously, you will need to do a little modifications. Again, this can just be another Google search, uh, which is, you know, how to uh, mount. Uh, it could be storage. It could be uh, grabbing an output or an input. In this case, you're going to probably want to grab a USB, um, a USB ports, or, or if you're using it on a laptop, you're going to want to pull in a laptop uh, source uh, for your camera and, and attach it to the Docker instance here. But uh, yeah, um, I couldn't speak more highly of, of this if you're having problems. You know, it, it, like I said, it's probably more or less the issue is you're, you're trying to run it and who knows what you've installed on your computer after many, many, many years of use, right? And uh, so something probably conflicting or you don't have permissions or permissions set correctly, you know, it could be a number of different issues. And if that's the case and you want to get this working, then I would install it on a Docker or even a virtual machine. Are you more comfortable with uh, VMware? You know, um, you know, I have obviously the paid for version because I'm, you know, an IT professional. So I'm going to have the cool tools and stuff, but uh, you can create a new virtual machine and then it's a new instance. It's basically a little like a Docker, but just a little bit different. You know, it's all graphical and the other one would be command line based. So a little bit different. Um, and then you can run your VMs um, and run a fresh version of this. And then it has like really simple tools where you, once you're in your instance, you can grab right here, see, USB controller. So like in this case, I'm using a USB webcam and I want to be able to uh, grab that controller. And that way when the VM starts, I can just select the Logitech camera and then it will know. And then I can run those same commands that you saw from steps one through seven and you'll be good to go. So thank you for viewing. I really appreciate the views. Uh, I, I know so many of you have asked me to do an updated version of this because uh, uh, it was produced in March 7th of 2021. And so we wanted to get this out. So please like this and uh, leave a comment, show your support. Really, really appreciate it. Hopefully I can continue to do these YouTube videos. I do have a lot of fun doing them. It is hard. We are a small uh, Arizona business and, uh, you know, try to get 
things moving on the business standpoint to produce uh, meaningful content is always a challenge, you know. Uh, I do want to throw one last thing out there. So we are, um, I don't know if you saw this or not earlier, but I had a helium shirt on. And the purpose of that is I, I was a mental reminder for me all to ask you, do you have any suggestions on, um, how do I say it? Uh, uh, creating another sub channel or, um, or maybe even adding on and just creating a separate division for cryptocurrency, right? Uh, I mean, it's the name of the game. It's this world is changing ever so and everything's going crypto and shout out to the helium project. Love it. It's a lot of fun. And so the reason why is it's going to be like an interview slash technical chant, uh, channel. So, uh, business partners and friends, um, have, uh, we've started like a little mini club, and so I kind of either want to think of either a new name for the channel, or the new name for, for the YouTube, or fit it into this channel, have like a subdirectory where it would go and have its own following. Um, because, you know, basically here's what it is. I, I come, and what I bring to the group is my technical experience and background, obviously, right? So the problem with with it is that um you know there's a lot there is when i when i had all these new people come in to the group and they were interested and they've had a technical background some of them for 30 something years and they were not able to do certain things or buy certain altcoins that are not available in the u.s or uh you know get a head start on some of these releases that are coming out or projects or you know setting up a miner like the helium networks or the chia network or some of these alt projects right so We've learned through the experience because I've had to handhold them throughout it. And, you know, even when they got later on more advanced, you know, they've had some problems that literally just stopped their progress. So I think it would be beneficial to share that entire project, all the pain points from the third party perspective. We would I would do an interview with them. We would go through it, how we've done solar and battery and you know making these miners work as efficiently as possible you know i think would be beneficial for the entire community because that's what this is all about right producing something so that everybody can benefit and make a little money or have a side hustle or maybe maybe even a lot of money because we don't we don't know what the potential or possibility is so anyways that's just my two cents thank you so much for viewing uh you all have a great